my wife had just pulled a, a book. Uh, oh, Halls of the Arcana. Oh, wow. She yeah. just pulled yeah. that off like one of the when we worked on that one. Yeah. Was, uh, and it, yeah, there was the, uh, the, the section on uh, the computer networks for the <laughs> cell, you know, and it was, yeah. it was spectacularly epic, you know, pooling resources to get that, you know, two or three. We didn't even have a net connection when that book was written. We did not, White Wolf did not have a website when we started work on that book. We had one when it came out. But you know, the, the, the lag time between the time you envision the book and the time that it actually comes out, even when you work at a breakneck, crazy ass pace like we did back in the day, it was still four to eight months, depending on the book, and sometimes frequently more. Like Sorcerer's Crusade, I, I was working on, I think I was working on Sorcerer, I was working on and off on Sorcerer's Crusade for like six months. Uh, I did the, the hardcore writing was about two months. But, um, you know, it pales in comparison to 16 months. Then again, I, I, I compared, when I was I was talking to my dad yesterday, uh, not yesterday, Father's Day, and I compared the writing of 20th anniversary, page 20th anniversary, to imagine that someone had, that, that me and my crew had spent five years whipping up this epic, this, this epic bowl of salsa. And then as soon as I was out, they, took, they told Jess to take the salsa bowl upend it and then start throwing in other kinds of food on top of it and then when Jess left they told Bill here and make it a pizza <laughs> and then the pizza was like half was, was pulled out of the oven half baked and left for 10 years and then I was going in there going I know there's I know there's a meal in here someplace <laughs> and it was spent 16 months untangling all of the ingredients and adding new stuff because of course you know 2000 2014 instead of 1993 and and yeah that took a little while but but I'm happy with the results. It's huge. <laughs> it's like, I'm excited for it honestly. So on like so Sorcerer's Crusade yeah. uh, as kind of retroactively creating a history to mage that well because <coughs> say I don't know if it's it's probably fair enough assertion uh, to, to say that the initial draft of first edition was kind of a hijacking of Ars Magica and, and I mean, insofar yeah. as in the day yeah. Lion Rampant and then eventually White Wolf did produce Ars oh, no. Magica. Oh, no. Ars Magica actually was Lion Rampant before White Wolf existed. Right, right. Uh, Jonathan, and, Jonathan and Mark Mar created it back in, I think, 87. Yeah. Uh, and White Wolf came about when Lion Rampant was kind of going like this, and White Wolf Magazine already existed. And Mark and Stephen Stewart met at uh, Gen Con 89, I think it was. And then they, they said, hey, let's do this thing together. Got all the necessary paperwork and stuff. And, you know, formed, formed White Wolf in 1990. And they, were, they continued, Ars Magica came with Mark. Right. So we, we had Ars Magica until 1994 when Jonathan Tweed, who was with Wizards at that point, bought it. And at that point we needed to work up this like four page list of terms that Watsi owns these terms, White Wolf owns these terms, and we're sharing custody yeah. of these terms. Right. But I was not an Ars Magica fan anyway. I know that's heretical. And lots of people out there are gonna go, fuck you man, Ars Magica was great. Ars Magica was, was impenetrable and frequently boring just because the, the, the writing on a lot of the source books was very, very fine. And so I liked a lot of the concepts in there, so I took some of the concepts. The best thing, though, getting to, to uh, Sorcerer's Crusade, the thing that I really, one of the things that I loved about First Edition Mage is it was, history-wise, it was a blank slate. It says, oh, uh, Mythic Ages, Traitor Copernicus, here's some traditions, go. And one of the first things that, that me and my crew, Kathy Ryan, Brian Campbell, Sam Chupp, uh, and uh, Jim Moore, did was we began putting together the history of, and Bill Bridges also with, with his, his work with the, uh, uh, the Sons of Ether being as he was one of the original creators of Mage First Edition also as well as my, my mentor. Uh, that's a long story and I'll get to that in a second but um, we, we spent about two years hashing out the 
who did what to whom, how did this come about, when did this come about, what was the effect of this, what culture did this come from. And I'm, I've been involved and interested in magic and cultural history since I was a kid. And so I was like, oh, well, that could be like that, and that could be like that, and this could be over here, and this could be like here. And we started cobbling together the, the, the meta plot in you know, 93, 94, uh, you know, started appearing in like the shadows and Fragile oh, Path. By the time we got to Sorcerer's Crusade, which the working title was Fall of the Covenants, and then we're like, nobody's going to fucking know what a covenant is. Uh, Rich Dansky actually came up with the name of Sorcerer's Crusade, which was like, you know, yes, that. Uh, but we had a really, we had a really established back history by the time I started working on this. And we, it took, a, it took a little while to get the right combination of people. I wrote most of this. Um, he's going to clear me because I'm blanking on his name at the moment because he saved my ass at the last minute here. And he and I, Ken Hyde, I think it's Ken Hyde. I'm just making uh, sure. Yes, Ken Hyde. Ken Hyde completely I saved my research. ass on this one. Yes, because we, the, the, the history chapter in, uh, in Sorcerer's Crusade, I wrote the mage history part, but the mundane history part, I knew history, but I didn't really have the time to research the facts right. because I was doing everything else. And it went through four other writers, and all of them choked on it because they couldn't figure out that blend between historical writing and creative writing that you need to have for a really good for a really good role, role playing something. So Ken and I met at. I, I forgot which con it was because it was everything was all cons all the time at that point. <laughs> but he said, "Oh yeah, I did this stuff." I'm like, "I know your stuff." Yes, and he gave me one draft, solid, of chapter. I think it's chapter two, chapter three, whichever the history chapter is. And this is, he gave it to me right before the deadline when I needed to have it so that I could write the rest of it. I'm like, oh, thank you, gods. <laughs> so Ken, Ken has been at the at, at the top of my my. To, to go to list ever since then, even though I, it took me a to remember this day. Hi folks, I do this a lot. I completely suck, I, I am dyslexic and dyscalculic, and I completely suck at names. And so, if we ever meet at a convention or something like that, and I forgot your name, I'm sorry, it's not personal, it's me. Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 gosh, I can't remember who once described Ken I is. Ken, I've done more research before breakfast than you did in your entire college yeah. career. I, yeah. Yes, and uh, he can write. Yeah. That was that was the problem. I had I had first hired somebody who could write but couldn't do research. Then I hired some people who could, could do research, research but couldn't, couldn't write. write. <laughs> and Ken can do research and could write. So I took his stuff, a little bit here and there of the other people's stuff, put it together, and then wrote on top of it, which is usually what I do. Uh, there, there were other people. I did not write all of all of Mage Twenty. I wrote most of it, but there is still there's work in there from Brian Campbell, who wrote about a third of the technocracy section. Um, Rochelle Udall, who was the person who followed me on uh, on Sorcerer's Crusade when I stepped off the line, and who also worked on Orphan Survival Guide, uh, Revelations of the Dark Mother, and other things. Rochelle did a, an awesome job, and she is my go-to from now on. Uh, she and I have been friends for like 20 years, but that's another thing. Um, but uh, Jess, Jess and Bill both contributed. Um, Jess wrote the, the virtual adepts. Bill wrote the, uh, the Sons of Ether. You know, excuse me, Society of Ether. The Society of Ether. Alan Barney, who is also just you know god of great and awesome in, in game writing, um, wrote the Akashiana, uh, Celestial Chorus, and the Hermes, of course. Now, now you bring up Jess, and, and I know you guys are good friends, yeah. and and. I know that he's caught a lot of flack for revised edition. And so not his, so not his fault. <laughs> um, not Jess's fault. Now, now, disregarding any criticisms, were there parts of revised that you just thought that was just perfect? Oh yeah. 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 You, believe it or not, I actually came to sort of like the Avatar story. After the, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, you know, when I started looking at what, what particularly what, what Bill and I'm completely blanking on the guy who did, who, who 
develop the last three technology yeah. sequences. Yeah. I'm sorry if I were on. Uh, Ryan McQueen? Yes, Martin Ryan McQueen. I, I really love what they did with, with the last three technocracy books. Uh, I liked a lot of what Bill was doing, Infinite Tapestry and, and so forth. They managed to take something that was a marketing idea um, and do good stuff with it. So in, in, uh, rather in uh, Mage 20, I guess this is official, in Mage 20 the Avatar Storm is there but it is optional. Uh, one of the big things that I did with untangling the, 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 all the addition war maps was to, to put a lot of, of sidebars in there, like as in Sorcerer's Crusade, Future Face. This, according to the official meta plot, this thing happened. According to history, this thing happened. Now, either it did happen just as, just as you've heard it happen, it might have happened, but it was a little different, or it didn't happen at all, it's, it's your problem. It's your and that's all throughout Mage 20. So there's no issue about, about edition wars. But as far, oh, sorry. Oh, come, come. No, as far as the revised stuff, I really, really liked, I liked parts of the Book of the Traditions. Um, the rules, yes. Uh, that I spent a long time un unraveling, but I really like the material of the two stories. The, uh, the, new, uh, the new storyteller's guide was very, very good. I liked their road. I liked the new, the new technocracy books. I liked a, lot, a number of things. I worked on the Hermes uh, uh, revised Hermes. And there were a lot of things about the revised gear I liked. One thing that I am doing, though, from Mage 20 for as long as, I'm, as long as I'm on the line, is reinstituting my old policy that only I write for the list. Because, as I was telling Kayla earlier, they had a bunch of different people writing the list from revised on there. These people frequently didn't check with each other. And so there were all those contradictory rules throughout, all, throughout revised. And I said, I write all the rules. Palladium edition stuff. <laughs> Now, as so, I've, I've noticed looking through the, uh, the uh, quick start rules for for Mage Twenty, um, some as you pointed out with the Society of Ether, there's some some definite changes in the, the nomenclature.